Hey, how's it going, friends? So this video is gonna be fairly short, roughly three minutes or so. I just, uh, I've been using C-Log on the cannons for a little while, and I have a standard profile that I use for things that I need to get, get in and out done quickly out the door. Uh, and I've been testing the Vision Color Cinetech and Cinecolor and the Vision Color and Vision Tech. I really like the Cinecolor, the Cinetech. It's a teal and orange look, more like cinematic, but it's baked in. And then the Vision Tech and Vision Color is more just like a, a flat profile that's kind of just more accurate colors. So in my tests, I decided this, this footage might help someone uh, looking to try out a different profile for the Canon camera. This is only for Canon um, and it works, I'm pretty sure across the board for all Canons. So you can easily, if you have more than one body, even if, even if it's one of the smaller uh, M bodies or an APS-C sensor body, uh, you could still use it and match your colors across both your cameras or all three or four of your cameras, how many cameras you want to match pretty much. And I'm going to put the link down here uh, where to purchase these. This is not a sponsored review. These have been out for a few years, uh, but I've been more recently trying them on my EOS R5, EOS R5. I'm really happy with the results. It lets me grade fast, uh, a lot faster than when I'm grading from scratch in DaVinci Resolve, a lot faster than C-Log. I don't just throw a lot on, even if I'm like shooting something in like neutral or standard, like with flat settings. Uh, I use a color checker to get the colors right, and then I mess with them to get the colors that I want. So I try to get the skin tones close with this, and then I pretty much alter my greens and blues and yellows, uh, I'm rambling. So basically the following footage on the left hand side, you'll see the flat image straight out of camera and then the right is the corrected and uh, I kind of went for a sort of teal and orange look. I messed with the blues and the greens and a little bit with the skin tones, uh, just kind of deepened the orange a little bit, uh, messed with the luminance, but Basically, that gives you an idea, and you can see from left to right that there there isn't a whole lot of fiddling. Uh, I guess in, unless you mess with the footage yourself, you really don't know. But uh, in something like Premiere or Resolve or uh, any other editing program that, that lets you deep dive into color grading, it's a fairly simple process. Basically, you just increase your contrast, mess with the colors a little bit, and it's pretty much done. The color science with this, these profiles is really complementary to skin tones and pretty accurate as far as correcting. So when I use this with like a Canon standard profile or even C-Log, there are a lot of red corrections, a lot of skin tone corrections. There's a lot of things I do with the greens. Uh, and with this profile in particular, I basically, I basically, I, if I don't want to, I don't have to correct it because it's so close already that, you know, as long as your white balance is right, it's right kind of deal. And I considered running the whole two and a half minutes or so footage flat and then another two and a half minutes or so graded, but that doesn't really let you A, B unless you skip back and forth in the video. So what I did is I split it right down the middle so you could see ungraded and graded and you know that's just my personal taste uh the grade i went for but it does let you see what you can pull out of it you can get a lot of highlight information a lot of shadow detail out of it uh which makes me think me shooting in c-log is kind of a waste of time because c-log uh inherits a lot of noise in the blacks most of the time uh, especially if you're inside, but it also does outside. Like I do a lot of outdoors shooting and when you see the sh shadows in the trees, they're usually noise. there's usually noise hiding there and I have to be really careful with my exposure. So this profile, I thought it was worth sharing with you guys because um, I'm very happy with it. I'm using it on all the cameras. So as far as the camera and the settings, it's the Canon EOS R5 with the 
24 to 105 L at, at F4 the whole time. And um, the only thing that's different that might throw off the color, that has a tendency to throw off the color, is the moment uh, ND filter, the variable ND filter. This is a great filter. I've tested it against a lot of other ND filters. You can see the little red metallic front there. Um, this one is really interesting because it's almost completely neutral. I don't really notice the tint. It's not like a correction thing. It's a almost like switching your lens kind of thing. It's not, doesn't add color. I made sure since for like probably 98% of the following footage, I'm outdoors and I needed to use an ND filter or the footage would look crazy. Um, I made sure that I used this one and none of my other ones. I have one that has like a, a yellow tint to it. This is the ND4 to ND32 filter. Uh, I, I don't usually have to go any higher than that. Uh, even because I shoot in broad daylight, most of the time I shoot I, could, I shoot at noon an awful lot, uh, and it hasn't been a problem. If it is a problem, I'll stop down more, especially if, if I'm using a f1.8 lens, I'll stop down. But enough about that. I just wanted to know what I was using. Uh, as far as the settings, uh, 24 frames per second, 4K, 150th, uh, all your usual stuff. And I was at ISO 200 for all of it. So uh, I probably could have got away with ISO 100. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Uh, please subscribe and tell your friends. And remember, create, share, repeat, and keep it awesome. I'll see you next time.